hey guys welcome back to the second tutorial now in this tutorial I'm going to just show you how to create a very basic schematic which will have a power source which can be a coin cell battery or often found on your motherboards and some basic 5mm LEDs along with some resistors so you can make some blinky boards so let's get started buttermilk So the first thing you want to do after opening Eagle is coming to the projects tab over here and opening your test project which you created in the last video. Just right click on it, go to new and create a schematic. And here we have our very first schematic. Now a schematic may have multiple number of sheets depending on the complexity of your circuit. But in this one we will just start with one sheet. Now the very first tool I want to introduce is the add tool. Now as the name suggests you can add multiple components with the add tools. So the first thing we need is LED. So I'll just type in LED over here. And Adafruit has some pretty nice LEDs. So I'll just select the classic 5mm LED. So this is how it looks in your schematic and this is how it will look on your board file. So I'll just click on OK over here to add an LED. So we need three LEDs. So I'll just click once, click twice and the third time. So there we go. We have added three LEDs. Now to quit adding, I'll just click on escape and I'm done with adding those LEDs. The next thing I want to do is add some resistors. So for that I will scroll down to the RCL library. Here we go we have the RCL library over here. Now there are a lot lots of resistors over here so I would prefer the US ones which will give me these zigzag type lines or if you like the European ones which have a single rectangular box. I prefer the US ones. So since we are not dealing with SMD components, this is just a standard through hole resistor and this is its symbol. So we need three LEDs, three resistors for three LEDs. So I'll just click on OK and I'll say one, two and three and I'll click on escape. So here we are back to adding. Now we need something called as a cell. So let's just say cell and we have something like Adafruit cells. Yeah. So this is a coin cell holder. And I'll just say OK. And I'll just place it over here and I'll press escape. So now I'm done adding components. So I'll just press cancel. So coming up to the next tool is the move tool. Now I can move around all my components with the move tool. So I can just select it and move. So let me zoom in. As you can see every component has a origin marked with the plus sign and your cursor your mouse needs to be very close to this origin so that you can able to select this component and move around. Otherwise it will make this kind of sound and not select. You can also select with the move tool and do a right click to rotate it. So here we go. We can rotate all the three LEDs. Next up is the rotate tool which obviously rotates your parts. Next up is the copy tool. I can just select and make a copy. Now I don't need this copy so I'll just go to the delete tool and delete this thing as easy as that. Now say for example you want to move all these three LEDs together. So I'll use the group tool 
over here and I'll just group them so this is how I group and I'll go to the move tool because I want to move so I'll just hold down control and do a right click this is how I move multiple tools if you are unclear with the instructions it says left click to select the object to move or control plus right click to move the whole group as easy as that so say for example I want to delete all these LEDs together I can use the delete tool in combination with the group tool so I'll come back over here and I'll group my LEDs and I'll select the delete tool I'll hold down control and I'll do a right click that will delete all my LEDs now obviously I can do a classic control plus Z or a control plus Y for undo redo so these are the basic uh, tools with which you can add and move around and rotate uh, the components in your schematic now let's arrange these components so that they start making sense so I'll just move LED 1 over here 3 so LD1 will correspond to R2 yeah much better so I'll rotate this because this is the positive terminal of the cell which will be connecting to the positive terminal of the LEDs now the most important tool is the net tool which with which you can make connections so as you can see if you bring it near to the terminals it gives you a green circle now there are two terminals on this coin cell holder so I'll just short them out and I need to connect these to the LEDs so here is a simple junction which goes 1 by 3 and I need to connect these LEDs to my resistors and these resistors need to be connected to the negative terminal so there we go circuit completed as easy as that now we are missing something we are missing the values of these resistors given the fact that we have 3.3 volt of power supply we need to add some resistors to limit the current so we can come back over here and use the value tool and then click on the resistors so I'll just type in 220 say for example E for ohms so 220 E and it notifies and I'll do the same for the rest now say for example you mess up with the values and you want to go ahead and change it again it can be easily done by doing the same thing Let's say 1k which is becomes 1 kilo ohms but I'll keep it 220 as of now but say for example I also want to change the value of these LEDs LEDs don't generally have values but I can assign them some colors so I can use the same value tool to select and here we go I want this red I want this blue and I want this green so as you can see the labeling over here is kind of getting a bit messier so I'll use the move tool to pull my LED up and my register up so as you can see along with my LEDs and register my nets which is the connecting topology so as you can see along with my LEDs and registers my nets are also moving and now I'll move the green one now if you're designing this professionally I wouldn't let this thing happen oh I have the N is also small so I'll change it to caps yeah much better so so what we can do is we can use the smash tool over here to smash this LED and now the name and the value have their individual origins so now we can use the move tool to move around the labels 
which is the name and the value and I can do the same by right clicking and going to smash and I'll repeat the same for this one so now we go this thing looks much cleaner now I think we should bring the battery towards the center yeah. so now I'm going to use the move tool but before that I'm going to hold my alt button and then move it with my left mouse click see the difference I can move it more precisely as opposed to this movement now this is because I'm moving the label which is red and the name which is LED1 in the alternate grid. So the both uh, of the files in Eagle which is the schematic file and the board file have this thing called as grid which is obviously a combination of X and Y axis and there's an alternate grid in which uh, you can move things more precisely and you can access the grid options over here so the basic grid is 0.1 inch with a multiple of 1 and the alternate grid is 0 0.01 inch which is more precise and the style is dots and let's turn on the grid so here we go we have a dotted grid with the difference between two dots being 1 inch and this is how it looks with the line with one box being one square inch this is movement in the normal grid and this is movement in the alternate grid so you get a more precise option I'm going to just switch it off so if you try adding the LED from the Adafruit library and you cannot find one it's because you have not downloaded the Adafruit Eagle library and it's a third party library. So we need to go to the Adafruit uh, GitHub uh, repository and download the freely available Adafruit uh, Eagle LBR files. So here we have the GitHub link to the Adafruit Eagle library. And here we go, we have the .lbr extension which is the Eagle extension for the library files and I will just download this thing to my root folder of LPR files so here you go step number one is download now I'm going to come to my control panel which I can easily access with the window option and I'm going to go to options directories and here is my directory for libraries now during the basic installation you can find your original eagle uh, library folder over here where you will find all the original installed eagle libraries but I have moved this folder to my OneDrive location OneDrive documents folder so that it gets synced to my laptop and it get also synced on my desktop as well so I can work from home as well so all you have to do is extract make sure the LBR file is in the root LBR directory so it's easy for Eagle to recognize the library now let's come back to the schematic step number two before you add you have to use the manage libraries button this is a list of libraries which are in use and you have to make that library appear in this in use list and this is a list of all the available libraries to make it available over here you have to go to the browse and look out for your adafruit.lpr file just click on open select and click on use after which you have brought that library in use you can click on remove to remove it if you no longer need it and now you can easily add your LED or whatever you want from the 
typical Adafruit library. So let's just go ahead and search LED. And here we have the LED option. So, and there we go, LED 5mm. Now, apart from Adafruit, SparkFun has also some uh, awesome Eagle libraries as they design their originally manufactured uh, SparkFun boards in Eagle 2. So they have made some awesome Eagle libraries for all these components and they have uh, done some awesome segregation based on batteries, boards, capacitors, clocks and whatnot. So you can download it and repeat the same procedure with the easiest two, three steps and make sure you have it in your root LBR folder. So that's how you add third party libraries. So guys, this is how you create the most basic schematic in Eagle CAD. Now coming up in the next tutorial, I'll be showing you how to design a very basic Arduino with which you can play around, upload some code and blink some LEDs and do all the awesome stuff what people generally do with Arduinos. So that's it for this tutorial. Watch out for the next one.